where this polymer growth can be either totally stopped or can be carried out at a slow speed. Now, there are other aspects also which is known as gel effect or auto acceleration during the growth of polymer during the polymer synthesis polymer manufacture. This is a situation it can lead to a catastrophic failure of polymer growth it can lead to a serious accident it can lead to explosion of the polymerization reactor due to auto acceleration. What is that auto acceleration? In order to understand that auto acceleration, you try to imagine the synthesis of polymer synthesis of polymer from monomer. Uh, at different rates. Here you see the growth of polymer with time are shown in three cases at 10 degree Celsius temperature, at 20 degree Celsius temperature and 30 degree Celsius temperature. During polymer synthesis what happens? You think of starting from initiation to termination. Although there may be a limited number of initiator free radicals, primary free radicals produced during initiation. As soon as it produces primary free radicals that initiates monomer to form or to start the growth of quite a good number of polymer chains that continue to grow ultimately they terminate with each other forming a dead polymer chain. What happens there? Try to understand the physical situation in a polymerization reactor. Once this initiation starts and initiated monomer chains grow to bigger and bigger size in case of a liquid system it will increase the viscosity of the mass. So, it can be understood that it is a diffusion control process that means growing chains are diffusing within the system from one place to the other and before termination event two growing chains should diffuse close to each other, so that they can collide and terminate to form a dead polymer chain or else a growing chain can interact with a primary free radical for termination also, although I have not mentioned that thing previously, but it also can happen. That is also again a diffusion process. So, when this polymer chains becomes very big the system becomes highly viscous. If they cannot come closer then they cannot terminate that means there is continuous increase in rate of polymerization whereas termination rate is decreased. Once again you try to understand the situation propagation rate goes on increasing whereas, termination is not able to occur because of increase in viscosity of the system. So, R t is less than R p there can be a sudden acceleration of the polymerization rate this is a situation where you see after say after say uh, 65 or 70 minutes of growth polymerization 
there is sudden rise of polymer growth at this temperature. This is a case where it is shown for three cases of polymerization carried out at 10 degree, 20 degree and 30 degree. It can also happen in case of monomers polymerized in bulk without using any solvent, bulk polymerization there is no solvent, there is no separate solvent added where the monomer itself can act as a solvent for the polymer. The polymer chains which are being formed that remains dissolved in the monomer phase. So, gradually what happens with the uh, progress of time this polymer chains will increase the viscosity of the polymer solution there. As the viscosity goes on increasing then the diffusibility of the growing chains for termination that probability is decreased. So, that leads towards this acceleration of this uh, polymerization rate. Now, if you carry out the polymerization using a solvent solution polymerization, there solvent actually prevents or solvents uh, does not allow the viscosity to increase that much. Even then it is a solution polymerization depending on the monomer concentration taken for polymerization in that solution polymerization case there can also this happen this acceleration of polymerization rate can happen. So, this phenomena is known as auto acceleration or sometimes it is known as Tromsdorf effect or Norris Smith effect. And other way also it is called gel effect, gel effect that means entire mass gels looks like a cross linked polymerization system. Those who are synthesizing polymethyl methacrylate in the laboratory do those who are doing lab class they can experience one or two can experience it is not that true always it can happen, but sometimes it happens all on a sudden you are just uh, what you uh, do you have you take a conical flask or a RB flask where you take certain quantity of monomer add specified quantity of initiator dissolve it then you purge with nitrogen gas to remove this oxygen from this uh, system then you close it in nitrogen purged condition then you uh, start this container in a thermostatic bath polymerization. During that process you can ask your supervisor there sir I am not getting any polymer. So, I do not see that the viscosity of the solution is increased. So, probably in my case polymer growth is not there. In another case in some other case one can find that the viscosity is gradually increasing. In some other case one can find all on a sudden the mass within the flask sets to a solid and starts boiling inside. So, these effects can be visualized why it happens because if there is auto acceleration if there is auto acceleration like this. So, it is highly exothermic reaction that means the propagation rate is had become very high. So, so many one more molecules are adding to the growing chain and liberating huge quantity of heat that is increasing the temperature as well as that is decomposing that is helping to decompose the initiator present over there. So, <coughs> a complicated situation can happen there and entire mass gels and that polymer mass becomes waste or useless. Now, in a small system uh, the, the uh, point of danger is not that much, but in case of a huge container say a batch of few tons in a big reactor there you just imagine the quantity of heat that is involved over there that will explode the reactor like a huge bomb. So, that is the danger situation. So, the, this is this occurs due to auto acceleration or polymerization rate. So, that is known as auto auto acceleration effect or gel effect or Tomsdorf effect 
or not a Smith effect. Now, let us see what happens to the molecular weight of the polymer formed by this addition chain polymerization. In case of condensation polymerization, you have seen the effect of polymerization rate on molecular weight number of various degree of polymerization with the extent of polymerization as well as rate of polymerization all those things you have seen there. Now, let us see the situation in case of addition chain polymerization. Now, here in order to understand or in order to explain the effect of this rate of polymerization or rate of polymerization on the molecular size one parameter has been considered here is considered here that is kinetic chain length. What is a what is the concept of kinetic chain length? Kinetic chain length means the length of the length of the polymer chain or growing chain prior to termination. It remains kinetic. So long it remains alive so long a growing polymer chain remains alive it is called kinetic. So, length of the polymer chain prior to termination is known as kinetic chain length. So, we can have the relation of this kinetic chain length with the rate of polymerization and rate of termination. Now, this kinetic chain length can be expressed as the ratio of R p and R i or R p and R t rate of polymerization and rate of termination. Ratio of these two rates, ratio of these two rates R p and R t gives a measure of kinetic chain length. That means, a polymer chain is growing, it has initiated over here and it is growing and at the at its end it bears a free radical activity. So, this is a growing polymer chain radical. So, length of this polymer chain from here to here is known as the kinetic chain length. Kinetic chain length. prior to termination. Now, if there are two such growing chain terminate by coupling process, the length of, of the polymer chain after termination will be this much. So, it will be nu plus nu twice nu. So, it is if it is by coupling, if it is by disproportionation, if it is by disproportionation, it will be molecular weight will be equal to nu, either nu or twice nu. Now, by substituting these values of R p and R t here, we can get a relation k p m by twice k t m dot. Again, this m dot concentration, if you, you, you in the, that can be obtained by the steady state concept, and after substitution, we can get this relation. So, this is equal nu is equal to k p m by twice f k d k t i to the power half, and this for your idea, for your information, the values of various rate constants and rates of polymerization and rates of terminations, rate of initiation etcetera. This k p unit is unit of this your propagation rate constant, unit of uh, unit of decomposition initial decomposition rate constant, unit of termination rate constant, rate of polymerization. So, please do not ignore the rate constant values and 
values as well as their units. Looking at these rates or taking these values, you can go for calculation of various parameters in this addition chain polymerization case. Now, the degree of polymerization number average degree of polymerization and kinetic relation between number as degree uh, number average degree of polymerization and kinetic chain length. Huh. I am sorry, one thing I forgot to mention you, I just told you that before polymerization it needs nitrogen purging. None of you asked me the reason. Do you know the reason why oxygen is uh, nitrogen is passed to remove oxygen? Hmm? Oxygen acts as inhibitor of polymerization. If we carry out this addition chain polymerization in presence of air and in presence of oxygen, you will not get a polymer. Polymer will not be formed. So, oxygen should be removed because oxygen acts as inhibitor that inhibits the polymerization. For that reason, oxygen is removed. Anyway, let us come back. This degree of polymerization and kinetic cell length. As I mentioned, this number of average degree of polymerization may be equal to twice new if the termination is by coupling process, if it is by disproportionation process, it will be equal to x n value will be equal to new. So, by putting those values, this is the now your this is the molecular number by molecular rate. If the molecular rate of the monomer is m0, m0 into x n bar is equal to m0 into 2 into this k p m by twice f k d k t i to the power half. Okay. So, it indicates that the molecular weight depends on the concentration of monomer and the initiator concentration ratio of these two parameters monomer concentration and initiator concentration molecular weight. So, if the initiator concentration is high you see if the initiator concentration is high the molecular weight will be low. This is mathematically clear from here, but physical concept why so? If the concentration uh, of the initiator is very high why the molecular weight will be low? More number of polymer chains will be initiated started, but the quantity of available monomer is less. So, the so the total length of the polymer will be less, this is one thing. Another thing, if there are more number of initiated free radicals present in the system, there are many more possibilities that can happen. So, this is a growing chain that is propagating as it gets more and more monomer, it will continue to increase in length. Now, if instead of getting reacting with interacting with monomer, if it interacts with a primary radical or an impurity which can act as, as initiator or radical like this, so its growth is arrested over here. Not only that, if there are many more chains present in the system that can interact with monomer even and in this case of interaction with monomer may not be a propagation, but it can stop the polymerization over here. Means, it will stop over here plus a new chain can be initiated. So, this is propagation, but this is not propagation, this step is not propagation, this is a different situation. So, in order to get high productivity, high polymerization rate, one can use higher concentration of initiator, but the problem will be at the cost of, you can do it at the cost of molecular rate molecular rate will be lower. Not only that, it can act as a, it can transfer this radical activity to this initiator. So, those things we are coming to discuss. 
So, the molecular weight of the polymer depends on the ratio of the monomer concentration to that of the initiator concentration. Now, here let us consider one parameter. You have been acquainted with a parameter number average degree of polymerization. You can have another parameter weight average degree of polymerization. What is number average? What is weight average? This is based on the number count, this is based on weight count. Number of species and this is based on the weight of different species, average weight of different species present. That actually controls the molecular weight distribution, distribution of the various molecules of different sizes. Say, if you take a ratio of these two, this is known as polydispersity. Now, if this is equal to 1, it is a case known as monodisperse. means x w x n bar is equal to x w bar. All the small discrete small molecules are monodispersed, but the polymers are not that way monodispersed, although you can have monodispersed polymer. What is the polydispersity value? It can range from 2 to 50 or even more. means you can have a sample of polymer having different sizes sizes sized molecules present in this thing large molecular chains smaller molecular chains so there is a distribution of molecular sizes in a sample of polymer that is expressed with the help of this polydispersity index. So, that is shown over here. Now, this monodispersed polymer sometimes it is required to uh, required for specific purposes like as molecular standards or standard polymer molecules which will have standard set of properties. So, we need some sometimes this monodispersed polymers, otherwise the polydispersed polymer samples are produced during this polymer synthesis. Now, if you if the sample of polymer contains a large distribution, its mechanical properties, thermal properties, optical properties, all these properties will be influenced by this dispersity of molecular sizes. We will discuss those things while when we shall discuss the structure property relationship of polymers. Now, here in this case of addition chain polymerization, how to control the polymer molecular weight? In case of condensation polymerization, you saw that molecular weight can be controlled by deliberate addition of monofunctional reagents or you can stop the polymerization by chilling or some other means. Those are the techniques of controlling the polymerization over there, but in case of addition and polymerization which is so fast, <coughs> so rapid how to control it or sometimes if I want a very high molecular rate product but I may not get it, you may not get it, you may not get that high molecular weight. So, what is influencing, what parameter influences 
uh, comes on the way to reduce the molecular weight or which uh, becomes a barrier to achieve a high molecular weight that those things can be understood by considering uh, parameter known as transfer reactions. Let me give you a concept of transfer reaction. <coughs> so, you have taken a system of monomer and initiator for polymerization by supplying sufficient energy, initiator decomposes to initiate a monomer for starting a polymer chain. It propagates by adding more and more number of monomer molecules. Ultimately, two growing chains interact with each other forming a dead polymer molecule. During these events of re, uh, reactions what happens that initiator radical may not perform its normal function, monomer may not perform its normal function. It can sometimes behave like uh, behave uh, abnormally. Sometimes the monomer system you have taken or initiator system you have taken may not be pure as is required. Sometimes <coughs> the polymerization need to be carried out in the bulk without using any solvent. Sometimes polymerization need to be carried out in presence of a solvent solution polymerization. Sometimes polymerization need to be carried out in suspension and as well as emulsion technique. Now, during uh, polymerization in those situations, <coughs> the monomer, initiator, polymer chain radicals, solvents etcetera behave in an abnormal fashion that leads to transfer reaction. What is transfer reaction? Transfer reaction is a process when the activity of a growing radical chain is transferred to some other species other than monomer. That means, any activity other than propagation, any activity of growing chain other than propagation is known as transfer reaction that means, its activity is transferred to some other species and it becomes dead and it cannot help uh, growth of higher uh, to our growth towards higher molecular weight that is transfer reaction. As I was showing <coughs> a chain is growing when it is supposed to add to monomer giving bigger chains, but it interacts with a R radical. So, it can stop over here. That is a transfer that means, this activity is transferred to this primary radical. Now, this activity can be transferred to a monomer. Not only that, this activity can be transferred to a polymer chain, a dead polymer chain. This activity can be transferred to a solvent. So, the agencies are present over there monomer, dead polymer chain solvent and some impurity. So, if this activity of or active site of these growing chains are killed, Srivastava, your Srivastava, if the activity of these growing chains are transferred 
from these active sites to agencies like impurity, solvent, dead polymer, monomer, such type of events are known as transfer reactions. And the result is low molecular weight polymers or branched polymers, sometimes cross linked polymers. People have experience of presence of gel in a thermoplastic linear polymer system. So, those who are working with polyethylene low density polyethylene or high density polyethylene for injection molding and extrusion or film, film blowing techniques in the, uh, your extrusion film blowing. The gel content of the polymer is a parameter which should be taken care of the gel content affects the rheology of the polymer during the manufacture of films. The quality of the films polymer films depend on the gel content of the polymer means a polyethylene granule that may contain some polymeric gels. How to justify that those polymers contain polymer granules contains polymer gels the thermoplastic no cross linking agent is added there during manufacture where from it comes it comes from this transfer reactions because once that radical activity of a growing chain is transferred to a dead polymer so some active site is created on the polymer backbone chain this is a dead polymer so some active site is created over here now it is surrounded by monomer molecules so a side chain can grow starts growing from here again it contains active site over here now if this is capable of abstracting one hydrogen from another polymer chain so formation of gel so what are the effects of these transfer reactions these effects are apparent it leads to low molecular weight chain it leads to branched polymer structure it leads to gel structure and it affects the polymer kinetics to a very to a large extent. Sir, I have a question. Yes. During polymerization, if I got gel, is for first point it is possible to separate. If it is possible to separate this gel, it is again possible to reactivate the polymer chain to again uh, get the solid polymer. In practic in practical case situation, it is not it is not possible because the system is very high viscous and the gel content is not very high gel content may be very uh, say 1 or 2 percent or less than 1 percent now in order to separate that gel that will not be economic expensive one and there is a high viscous system how to separate it so these are the side reactions transfer reactions are kind of side reactions or adverse reactions which affects the polymer kinetics, which affects the polymer qualities, etcetera. So, the, uh, this, uh, the this influence of transfer reactions should be given proper care, proper attention during po polymer manufacture. So, here you see schematically it, it is shown with the help of this relation is a growing chain radical having n number of monomer units at the end active site active radical so this is an agent it might be a solvent it might be a polymer it might be a monomer it might be an initiator it might be an impurity anything so what happens this transfer its radical site radical activity to this molecule by attaching x with this this one and producing a new active site new radical now this new radical may or may not be capable of initiating polymerization 
there is no guarantee that this will initiate polymerization, but it can initiate that is called reinitiation K A reinitiation rate constant reinitiation rate constant K A. Now, its kinetics of growth is totally different from the normal kinetics normal propagation reactions you understand. So, this is the situation if there is transfer reaction if that occurs during polymerization that should be minimized, but in order to have a proper control over the molecular weight as well as the molecular weight distribution as you have seen earlier this x w bar by uh, sorry x n bar this ratio this ratio can be controlled by deliberate addition of some chain transfer agent deliberate addition of chain transfer agent why that is necessary why we need a polydisperse polymer not monodisperse because you think of a polydisperse polymer having a mixture of molecules of different sizes it contains low molecular weight as well as high molecular weight as well as medium molecular weight broad that means if the molecular distribution is broad the presence of low molecular weight species in the polymer sample helps in better processing easy processing of the polymer by melt processing techniques or solution processing technique. So, these things are there just I am mentioning this thing for your reference it may be necessary in later stages. Okay. So, molecular weight distribution can be controlled by deliberate addition of chain transfer agent that is different thing that you are deliberately adding some chain transfer agent to control the polymerization uh, polymer molecular weight as well as molecular weight distribution. But these effects of transfer reactions onto monomer onto a dead polymer chain onto an impurity onto solvent these are not always recommended because uh, the, the these reactions become unaccounted for unknown things that means you do not have any control over them. So, while you are going to synthesize or manufacture a polymer in a solution technique or a bulk technique you select a suitable monomer initiator system suitable monomer initiator solvent system. So, that there is minimum transfer reactions look at the effect of chain transfer on rate of polymerization and degree of polymerization there are various cases various cases based on these rate constant values you know k p is rate of propagation k t r is the rate of transfer reaction not termination transfer reaction is also a kind of termination transfer reaction is also a kind of termination killing activity, but its activity is transferred to some other species which is not accounted for its growth is annihilated. Uh, premature annihilation transfer reaction is a kind of premature termination premature termination premature termination is not a desired situation. So, that is a transfer reaction. So, if the rate of propagation is uh, sorry rate constant of propagation is very very greater than uh, termination rate constant that is normal chain transfer and effect of effect on molecular weight it decreases polymer molecular weight decreases. Now, if this rate of propagation is very very less than transfer constant it leads to telomerization means telomers means low molecular weight species oligomers telomers means low molecular weight species oligomers telomerization that means the that will lead to a broad molecular weight distribution and there is a large decrease in number of degree of polymerization is k p is very very greater than transfer constant, but initiation rate initiators initiation rate reinitiation rate constant is less than rate constant of propagation there is retardation effect is retardation. So, this needs 
a thorough uh, analysis, critical analysis thinking on the rate constant values for propagation, transfer, reinitiation, all these things. So, you put some time, devote some time on this table, it is available in book also, you devote some time on this table and critically analyze the situations what can happen, your concept will be clear. All right. Now, let us see how to calculate the influence of those various transfer reactions on the number average degree of polymerization, number average degree of polymerization. Now, you know this number average degree of polymerization or that kinetic chain length you saw, it is the ratio of R p by R t, rate of propagation divided by rate of termination. Now, if this rate of termination is a combination of normal termination reaction as well as various transfer reactions, because those all transfer reactions lead to termination of the polymer growth. Okay. So, if the if we take a sum of different kinds of termination reactions beyond normal termination, then if we sum up those different termination rates, then the ratio of the rate of propagation and the rate of those termination, sum of those rates of terminations gives you an account of number average degree of polymerization. That means, in order to have a calculation of the number average degree of polymerization involving various transfer reactions, you have to consider this relation. It seems very complicated or clumsy, it is that not at all, this is very simple thing. You just could you not see in this screen, it is not visible, I am sorry, then I am writing. X n bar is equal to R p by R t. Okay. And what is R t? Sum of all reactions leading to all reaction rates. leading to termination of polymer growth. What are those? Normal termination by coupling or by disproportionation plus transfer to monomer plus transfer to initiator plus transfer to solvent plus transfer to polymer plus to impurity plus transfer to a chain transfer agent and so on. You know those expressions for those rates, their rates, 
expressions of their rates, rate expressions for normal termination, expressions for normal termination you know R t by 2 for this normal termination, then the second term is second term is k t r m m dot m, this is transferred to monomer, this is transferred to monomer, transfer to monomer transfer to monomer rate say R T R m is equal to k T R m transfer to monomer it is written like this where a growing chain is there involved and monomer and transfer to solvent R T R S here K T R S growing chain concentration concentration of solvent. Similarly, R T R initiator transfer to monomer transfer to solvent transfer to initiator K T R initiator m i like this. So, similarly you can have transfer to polymer, transfer to impurity, transfer to chain transfer agent. So, these are the various rates. So, some of those rates are written at the denominator. Hmm? Is it very difficult to remember? Very simple. Although the expression overall expression shows clumsy, but it is very easy to write. So, overall degree of polymerization is becomes equal to this R p by overall termination and transfer rates. Again, it is also shown here, the same expression is shown over here. You just read the first term in the denominator denotes coupling and other three denotes chain transfer by monomer, chain transfer by solvent or chain transfer agent or initiator respectively. A chain transfer constant C for a substance is the ratio of the, then another terminology is another parameter is introduced chain transfer constant C. What is chain transfer constant? Now, chain transfer constant is the ratio of the transfer rate constants, uh, transfer rate constants. What is this? Suppose, you want, if you want to evaluate, if you want to know this chain transfer to monomer, chain transfer constant for monomer. C m that is k t r m divided by k p normal propagation rate this is the transfer to monomer rate of transfer to monomer this is the chain transfer constant to monomer. Similarly, C s would be equal to k t r s divided by k p. Similarly, C i would be equal to k t r i divided by k p. So, by substituting this transfer constants to this equation, this equation you can get a relation 1 by x n bar is equal to k t r p divided by k p square m square plus C m plus C s concentration of solvent or chain transfer agent 
divided by concentration of monomer plus C i k t r p square by k p square f k d m cube. If you proceed systematically, you can easily derive this relation. So, these transfer constants and this transfer constants and uh, monom your rate constants for termination, propagation and monomer concentration etcetera all these have influence on the degree of polymerization. Okay. So, these this relation shows the quantitative effect of various transfer reactions on the degree of polymerization and known as this is known as a Mayo equation. This equation or this top equation, this equation or this equation is known as Mayo equation. I have shown this equation known as the Mayo equation M A I am writing here Mayo equation. Look at some data chain transfer constants for solvents and monomers at a specific temperature. Okay. So, if you take a system of styrene as the monomer and benzene as the solvent, this is the transfer constant to transfer constant for solvents K T R uh, uh, sorry. C s value, this value, this C s value. How these are evaluated? Polymerization involving those monomers and solvents should be carried out, and those parameters like R p, K p, K t, monomer concentration, initiator concentration, solvent concentration. If those are known, then by making a plot of this versus this, some parameter, some things should be taken as constant, some portions should be taken as constant, then you can evaluate uh, these values constant for C s, C m, C i, all those things. Now, here you see for benzene and styrene 0 0.023, look at this normal butyl mercaptan transfer constant is very high for this tyrene and for this vinyl acetate. Means what? If you add very small quantity of this tertiary butyl mercaptan during polymerization, polymerization will be immediately stopped. That means, the radical activity of those growing chain will be stopped by this butyl mercaptan. Why? What is a Markapton? Say suppose alkyl, alkyl radical S and H. Markapton is a thiol. This in general this is known as alkyl thiol. Huh. It breaks into R S radical and H radical. Both are active, highly active radicals. Now, these reacti active radicals react to growing chain. So, that will stop the growth of this thing forming like this or H So, activity of the polymer chain will be transferred to this or this that means, that will annihilate the growth stop the growth. Sometimes these are known as also radical scavenger. Now, here you can say, so how, how these are formed actually the energy available within the polymerization system, the temperature and the environment there 
this molecule is sufficient to break into R s dot and H dot. Not only that, if you take chloroform or carbon tetrachloride, some of it depends on the energy of the C C L and C H bonds or in case of carbon tetrachloride C C L C C L C C L C C L these bonds can break once a bond is broken then that will lead to radical hmm? that means in a, in the system if there is a chance of radical formation other than the monomer hmm, other than the monomer then that can affect the polymer growth by such way of radical scavenging activity or radical stopping activity which is known as transfer reaction. So, the ability of this monomer polymer system, ability of this monomer uh, uh, your, uh, your monomer and solvent systems hmm? this activity is different, different, monomer. different monomers that means different monomers solvent systems that is why you see this value is here N B 12 Markapton for styrene it is 200. Uh, to, uh, 10 thousand whereas a 480,000 whereas whereas this value uh, this for these two different monomers is different it uh, say you take triethylamine for this monomer is 7.1 for vinyl acid is 370 that means this transfer activity it does not act as a transfer agent for this styrene polymerization whereas it acts as a transfer uh, agent for vinyl acid polymerization understand. So now, here you see chloroform is not a transfer agent for this styrene or even methamethacrylate, but it is a transfer agent for vinyl acetate. Then why do you call them as solvents? Hmm? Why do you call them designated? Chain transfer constant for solvents actually these solvents when they are used for polymerization of these monomers <coughs> in a solution polymerization case there these solvents shows the transfer activity uh, or participate as a transfer reaction uh, your agent from the growing chain of polystyrene growing chain or polymethyl methacrylate growing chain or polyphenyl acetate growing chain. Uh, the same thing in other way it is shown effect of this initiation. radical initiators and their half life temperatures you see half life temperatures as given over here the formula the formula are shown over here and their half life temperatures are shown you can see in the net that is all thank you.